without further ado, Aaron Riley. Thank you very much. My name is Aaron Riley. If I can figure out my slides, we'll get on this. So my name is Aaron Riley. We're going to talk today about Yara writing. Uh, Yara is an amazing tool, but first uh, I want to talk a little bit. These are our sponsors. I want to thank them for everything that they do for us, and without them, that we wouldn't be here. And without uh, them, I wouldn't be able to get to tell you guys about Yara writing. My name is Eric Riley. Uh, I do uh, cyber threat intelligence and analysis for Cofins. Uh, I have a bachelor's in cybersecurity. I have 12 certifications. Um, there are a, are a ton of errands in IT. I've noticed this so professionally over the last 10 years. I've gone by Riley, so call me Riley. Uh, and if you want to know more about me, you can find me on Twitter or Discord and stuff like that. But we're here to talk about Yara, so that's what we're going to do. So what is Yara? All right, well, it's pretty much a framework used to analyze binaries and other objects uh, based on rules that are constructed in a certain way. Uh, think of a master search tool and how you can search uh, just about anything on a file system. Uh, it was developed by Victor Alvarez, who works for VirusTotal, and VirusTotal uses it exclusively on a lot of their uh, binary data pools and stuff like that. Uh, the acronym is pretty debatable. It stands for yet another ridiculous acronym, or yet another recursive acronym. Whichever one, it's meaningless. Yara is meaningless. Alright? So, I mean the word is. The file extension is, that you'll see when we do this is .yar. Uh, or .yara, and we're going to use .yara. Uh, Yara rules have three main components with an optional component on the end, and we're going to talk about that as well. Today we're going to go through just the basics of what Yara is, and then we're going to do a demo on it on the uh, uh, on the. We're going to do a demo on what Yara is, and hopefully a live demo goes in especially well, because we all know how that works. So I know you all are like, I know you are now, you just explained it, it's pretty easy, right? No, that definition was kind of, it's kind of long-winded, it was pretty dense. So Yara is just a pattern matching tool. It matches patterns that you've set. If you can see specific patterns within your data, you can pull it out with Yara. And what kind of use cases? Well, you can do it with filtering of any data. You can do it with email analysis, is where I use it in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, you can do it within memory analysis. So if you have like a, a sandbox that's studying uh, or looking and detonating malware, then you can use the YAR rules against that memory and pull out certain things that you can identify malware with. That's how I use it. You can also use it to hunt. So if you're going to be hunting, you can use it in your network. You can use it with uh, other uh, YAR rules on top of each other to help create an actual like path that leads you to your target. So understanding this, we need to talk about the four parts, the three main parts and the optional part. The three main parts are the rule, which you see here says rule, and then you need an identifier. That's the name of the rule. And so here I've named it the science KC underscore 2021. The optional field is the meta field, and that's for your notes and your descriptions. All right? What you're going to be matching on, the pattern you're wanting to match, is going to be the string section, and that is mandatory. The condition section is the logic here. We're literally saying, hey, with this strings that I'm trying to match, how do I want to match them? All right? So you have the things you want to look for, and how you want to look for them. And those are the, those are the, this is the main just straight construction of our just basic R rule. Here I say, if string one and string zero are there, fire on this rule. So if B-Sides KC 2021 rocks, or rocked is in there, or rocks and B-Sides KC 2021 are two different ways, I want it to fire on it. So there's, we're going to talk about the three mandatory things, or all four mandatory things, uh, that, the three mandatory things and the optional thing that you need for your YAR rules. 
First, we're going to talk about the rules, the rule actual start. So it needs to start with the word rule, and it needs to have an identifier, like B sides KC 2021. It's in C programming syntax, so you kind of can't, you've got to understand the camel case and underscores and things like that, or if you're using it a certain way. Uh, it can use any alphanumeric character, and it can have underscores, but it cannot start with a digit. The rule name cannot start with a digit. Uh, there are keywords in Yara that are reserved for the Yara engine, so you cannot use them within your rule name, and we'll talk about those in a bit. Uh, and then the main thing that I really want you guys to don't forget is your swiggles. I don't know, I, I don't really, really know the word for it. I call them swiggles. If you know the word for it, just keep your hand down because I, I like swiggles. Uh, and I find a lot when people go to copy and paste, they'll forget the bottom one or they'll forget the top one, and it'll just wreck you. You'll get an error, and you don't know why, but don't forget your squiggles. Brackets, that's the thing. All right, and so the optional section is meta, uh, and it starts with the meta tag. And anything underneath it is seen as plain text, and you can't start the, the variable with the dollar sign like you do in the other ones. So uh, this one, you can put as many characters as you want in it. It's for note-taking, it's for documentation. If you don't know, like if your malware, uh, your rule says just general rule, and then your documentation has all the reasons why you wrote this rule, then you're better off handing it off to somebody else and they know what it's for. Uh, and it's typically within the first section of a rule. It doesn't have to be, but for flow of reading, it's better that way so that when you like hand it off to somebody else, they don't have to scroll through everything and get to the documentation section of it. Now strings, like I said, these are going to be the pattern matching, that the patterns that you're going to be matching on, and you need to kind of construct them in a certain way. Each variable starts with a dollar sign. That's how it knows that it's looking for a variable. You can have string modifiers, which we'll talk about in a minute, in a bit. No case wide and ASCII. No case does uh, in, uh, case sensitive, so it's in case sensitive. Uh, wide looks for UTF-16 characters, and ASCII just looks for ASCII characters. Your, your variables can be uh, one of three things. It can be a regular literal string, like the text hello, uh, and it has to start with a quotes and end with quotes. It can be a hex representation, and it starts with a squiggle and ends with a squiggle. Uh, and then it can be a regex, and the regex is uh, PCRE, so it's Perl based. And so if you know that in a regex, it's very easy. And I'll show you a regex tool for uh, helping you along the way in a second. Uh, here, the condition section, like I said, is the logic. It's the brain. It's really where you need to kind of understand fifth grade math, to be honest, because it works in arithmetic order. Uh, you can have your Boolean expressions in there, and we'll use uh, a few of them. There's a, a actual trick to the knot. Uh, it doesn't work. That's the trick. Uh, and then there's the bitwise operator. Uh, you can, if you guys understand bitwise operations like XOR and all that kind of stuff, you can use them within your logical patterns. Uh, and then there's special variables that we'll show, uh, but that's a little more advanced. Uh, but we'll show a special variable when we're hunting for uh, malware within my data set. Uh, and syntax is critical. Uh, you don't want to have uh, a variable and, 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 because it'll grab all of them together. That's just all of them. If you want like and, or, and this, and that, you can group them into groups, and we'll talk about how that works. So syntax is absolutely critical in the condition statement. All right, anybody have any questions about any of those sections? So, would it be correct to think of the meta tag as kind of like comments in the normal code? Exactly, okay. exactly. Any other questions? All right, because uh, we're going to move to a live demo. Let's see what happens. Uh, and before we do that, these are the R keywords. Um, there's a lot of them, and I'm not going to go through all of them. But I just want you to be aware that like just random words, all, any, not, in, of, those are, those are keywords, okay? And then these are string modifiers. Like I said before, we're going to use the no case, we're going to use uh, why and ASCII, and I don't know why I'm just not. Uh, and we're going to use base 64 uh, and things like that if we have time. All right, so we're going to switch to
was to ask a question. Yes. Um, you, know, like, you said that uh, some of your all keyboards are like written and or. Got it. Uh, would that contradict the thing about whenever we're adding our strings or? Those keywords are in the logic. Is it, is it, or is using those keywords fully prohibited with the name of the rule? Yeah, yeah, that or that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So everywhere else is fine, it's just you can't have it in the name. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There, and there are other places where you can't have it for other keywords. So it, it's, it, they're called reserved words. So here, uh, I wanted to show you how I know our rule is constructed. Uh, I have created uh, a list of samples. I have a bunch of agent Tesla, Rimco, Snake, Nanocores, all those samples alive. And there's about 15 samples in there. If you wanted to know what they did and you wanted a really malicious USB, I can give it to you. Uh, but these are actual malware samples that are seen in the wild, and I've, I've personally analyzed each and every one of them. Uh, within this string file, I wanted to show you that the string here is a warm ipsum string file. Okay, so it's just a regular text. And I want to go ahead and put all this together for you. And I want to write a rule that looks into that text file for the string set KC. All right? Now, how would you do that? If we were going to do that, we'd write, you know, a rule. And then, I don't know, we just write set KC because that's our identifier. It's really hard to do this with the mic. Y'all hear me? Yeah. All right. So it's, we're going to do it like this. We're going to hope we don't reach your squigglies. Meta. You don't even have to fill it out, strings. And then here's where we're going to put the variable. So if I put a variable, and I just want to look for set KC, I'm just going to write it like this. Okay? Set KC. And that's the variable. That's all you have to do. You name the variable and you've given it its contents. Great. So now we just go to the condition statement. Alright, now what am I actually wanting to look at? If I can spell correctly. I'm actually. All right, I just want to know, set KC. That's all I really want to see. I don't really care any, any other way. There it is. And as you can see, this is CyberChef. If you're not familiar with CyberChef, it's an absolutely great, great tool. You can get it online. It has all sorts of different things on it. It even has a Yara engine, and that's why I do it. It's free. Cyberchef.github.io slash cyberchef. It's amazing. Uh, and what I did was I took that test string uh, here, as you can see, this text here, and I dropped it as an input file right here. Then I loaded up my YAR rule. I said, I'm looking for set KC. The rule says, all right, set KC, the rule, has matched one time, and it's matched on this wording here. Awesome. All right. That's great. Now you're thinking to yourself, what's the difference between that and find and replace? Well, find and replace. So find and replace uh, only happens on a text file. The R rules can do it on all file systems. You can literally point it at an entire file system and it will look at every file within it and go and find that set KC. So uh, we're going to actually move from uh, this to the to the actual uh, Yara engine, and we're going to go ahead and test it out. So we're going to do, I've written a couple of rules that are pre-written pre -written in here, and this one I call the Midwest Magicians, and you can see it if I open it here, it's the exact same thing. Testing Yara, calling cards, set KC, everything like that, okay? So we're going to look for, in this text, you know, and even more of that, so we're going to write Yara. Um, and then, actually, we'll just show you the help files with it. So, Yar has the man help, it does all sorts of things, right? We're actually going to be looking for the print strings, and we're going to go recursive. So, you're going to see that a lot. I'm going to do the dash S and the dash R. Recursive means that I'm going to be looking at all subfolders and everything underneath it. And then dash little lowercase s means print the strings that you match on. So, we're going to do Yar, just to initiate the engine. We're going to go rules, because that's where we need to be. And then we're, I called it Midwest Magicians. And then I want to go into the file that I want to do, or the folder, 
structure that I want to do, we're going to do dash s, dash r. And as you can see, Midwest Magicians, the rule, has hit on this file, and it hit on this variable, which is that. Easy enough, right? All right, so if we're doing this, and I changed that. I said, you know what, set KC is actually, no case means case insensitive. Let's just make it where I, I don't even understand where this case insensitive comes from. Will it hit if it's capital? Right around the rule? Nope. Oh, I changed. So it's easy to see how you can use it on a text file and things like that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move to like a, a Fredfish. We're going to see like uh, what it's like using it on production systems. So I have a, an HTML a folder that I have uh, 50 different samples of HTML Fredfish that are uh, verifiably malicious. And I can show you kind of the patterns that they see. So with patterns within Redfish, you typically see it's an HTM or an HTML file. And it either has a, a post or a git that's typically to a PHP. So if I was going to do that, uh, and I want to do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up this rule. And we're going to see how we do that. Like again, I said, we need to have the rule's name. Here we're having uh, the rule be HTML underscore Redfish. It's pretty descriptive. The meta, we're testing a YAR on HTML for Redfish. The streams, it's going to be, we're looking for PHP. So I put the no case on that. But here on the bottom one, you can see, oh, actually, that's not very big. So as you can see with the HTML variable, I'm actually using a regex. And regex starts with two forward slashes. And, or starts with a forward slash and ends with a forward slash. Uh, what I'm doing here is I want to match on HTM and HTML files. So the L is actually in a parentheses group with a question mark. What that means is it's either there or it doesn't have to be there. It's still matching. So I don't even have to write two different HTM or HTML. It's just a regex for both. And the condition here says PHP and HTML. So I want to hit both when I go to fly. All right. So we're going to do Yara. Rules. I'm already in rules. What's going on here? And then HTML. Then we're going to go to the samples, and I honestly, as you saw before, the samples have a whole bunch of folders and everything in it, so we're just going to do dash s, dash r. Like, I just want to know what's everything in there, and that has over 600 samples in that folder. 600. Look at this. Alright, so now we have, it says we hit on this, it's an HTM, the HTM's name is Bradley McMillan, I'm guessing it's Bradley, it's just got over here. Bradley McMillan HTM. it has a PHP. It's HTML within it and some of the samples and stuff like that. That's, that's definitely a hit. I don't know what the heck just happened. Live demo, right? Oh. There we go. Okay. So you can see it actually hit on that. But a lot of legitimate things have PHP in them, and a lot of legitimate things are HTML. So what if we go ahead and make it a, a thing further? What if we start looking for things like HTTPS or a post and things like that? So I went ahead and wrote a rule that does that. So let's look for HTML with a post. Alright, so here I have the post, which is typically happening, the PHP, but then again on the bottom side where you put your regex strings are on the bottom of your strings because of speed and processing. And I put another regex string in there. I want to look for HTTP or HTTPS. I want to know both. But as you can see, I've changed the conditions. I've changed them from this and that to all of them. I want all of them. There's no reason to write them all out. I can just do that and it works. So let's run that one. I'm in rules again, that's crazy. This one is called 
All right. And then we're going to actually look for uh, a packer, a well-known commercialized packer. Uh, and for all of you that don't know, a packer is used to obfuscate a payload. What they'll do is uh, threat actors or even legitimate services will take a executable and they'll pack it, which means that it's compressed and a lot of the files inside are hidden away uh, so that you can't do static analysis on it. When ran, the packer then unpacks itself and loads the executable. So we're going to look for a well-known packer. And to do that, I'm going to do UBX, just like we were doing before. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look for the uh, UPX signature. UPX is the well-known packer that I'm talking about. I'm sorry I didn't state that just a second earlier. Uh, it's got, it's commercialized like crazy. It also has a self-unpacking tool, which is what is one of the best things that in my life. And it should fire on that. And bake. Alright. No case. There it is. Did you see the difference? Alright, so it wouldn't fire because the U and the P and then the lowercase x. It wouldn't fire because the capital U, lowercase p, uppercase x. But if you put no case on it, it then does fire. UPX is known to put their UPX in all of its streams, it's all over the place. So it's an easy find, okay? So if we're looking for UPS packed binary, or UPX packed binaries, we're going to start looking into different YAR rules for it. So that's one of the easier ones. Uh, and I have that rule already written. UPX. All right, so here we're going to go down to, we're going to write our YAR rule again. So YAR, just to instantiate the engine rules. Uh, UPX dot YAR. And I just really just want, I love my samples folder. And S, and to be recursive. Show me the screens, let's be recursive. All right. As you can see, there's a ton of UPX and stuff like that, but it's, we're getting odd things. Is an HTML an executable? Why would somebody pack an HTML? That's not right. What you're seeing there is the HTML probably has UPX within the code base, but it's probably some kind of encoding. It's a random string, so that's a false positive. All right, well, let's break it down. Let's get even more in depth. What would we need to look for if it was something more than just the UPX. Let's look for actual executables, not just plain text. So UPX underscore bin here looks for an executable. We, we all know an executable has a header. The executable header has certain things that we can look for. The MZ is like the key to most executables, whether it's farther off into the payload, right at the first signature, right at the first uh, bit of the, of the header, it's got to be in there somewhere, right? Well, I know that MZ is the stream, and I also know that uh, 4D5A is the hex of that stream, but I want to find one or the other, right? And so here we're actually showing you how hex is used. Like I said, squiggly, 4D space 5A, is MZ and hexadecimal. Close your squiggly, all right? Now the condition says, I want the UPX packer and header MZ or header hex. So I want UPX packer number one. All right, and then the other two can be one or the other. And if we go to run this, we can see that, yeah, we're getting MZ45A. We're getting all the UPX and stuff like that on this one file. That's awesome. All right, that's gotta like get rid of our false positives with HTML, right? Well, we can check that. So if we do that and we rep for HTML, there shouldn't be anything. Whoa, that's crazy. That's nuts, right? The reason is, is because MZ could be another random string within that encoding of those HTMLs. All right, well, this is where it kind of gets a little harder because you know how I said not has a special trick to it? it doesn't work. And if you were going to do like uh, UPX Packer and header hex and not MZ, it wouldn't work. Not doesn't work. And so if we were going to go ahead and do that, we need to start getting into a little bit more of the use case scenarios and the conditions. Now, uh, there are special variables that the conditions can have. 
But I'm going to show you how not doesn't work. Because I'm a button for punishment. Uh, here, the UPX Packer, it's all the same thing. All I did was add the HTML string. Because I don't want that. If it's got an HTML string in it, don't give that back to me as results, right? Okay? So let's go ahead and run that rule. UPX bin underscore not HTML. Thank you very much. And we're going to run it through the grep. If this works, you shouldn't see any results. Ah, oh, we have results. Why? Because not doesn't work there. In the conditions in, the, in advanced Yara, you can have is, if else conditions, you can have uh, while statements and stuff in there, and that's where not works. It'll say if this equals or not equals. That's where not works. It doesn't work in the condition statement like this. So how do we find the MZ header at the front of the file and make sure it's an executable? Well, we can do a whole lot of string matching. We can say this, 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 and this, and do a whole bunch of things like that. But Yara, in its awesome abilities, already has a bunch of different, what I like to call special functions. They're called special variables, and you saw them earlier here when we're doing keywords. So int 16 means integer of 16 bytes. Int 8, integer of 8 bytes. Int 32, uh, 32 bytes like it is. But those are little linear, which means that they're read backwards. That doesn't help me when I'm trying to read as a human. All right, like I don't read backwards. I can, it takes a long time. I barely know how to read as it is, people. All right, like don't do this to me. So they created what Big Indian, and all Big Indian does is flip it the other way. So there are special use case functions that we can use to help us. So I'm gonna open up this rule here called UPX bin, all right? And this is a very sleek, very small rule that does everything that that rule did before, the rule before it did, but better. So I'm looking for the UPX factor, but then on the condition, I'm going to use a special functional variable that says uh, u int 16. So I'm going to say on the integers of 16, big Indian, so read the way I read, on the position of 0. So when that header, when you open up that file, the first position, the first bit, and goes for 16 bits, that's what I'm looking for, all right? I want it to be equal to the hexadecimal representation, 0x, 45a. I want that to be the first thing you look for. Because I haven't said this before, but YAR rules, they start the condition when they're being read by the computer, and then they move to the strings. If the condition says this and then that, it goes, well, this has to be first. And if that's not there, it doesn't work. It moves on to the next rule. It's very fast in doing that. So I want to know, I want to know all the executables first. Awesome. But then I want to know all those that are packed with UPX pack. All right? And I don't even have to set that bottom special variable within the string section. It's already going to do that for me. So if we run this rule, like I said, I'm going to multiply the rules. There we go. We're starting to see different malware. And it says these are executables. These are actually malicious files, and they have the UPX tagline in them. And look, there's only six, seven. There's only seven here. And one of them's a double up because I used the malware twice. I used it in two different places. So we went from over 600 different samples to seven, but using the R rule with two lines. That's pretty solid. You can use this anywhere on your network. You can use it on an endpoint for data, uh, DFIR. You can use it for email analysis where I use it. You can use it on data lakes just to say, hey, what's the data point here? Just throw it out, okay? All you have to do is download Yara. It can run on operating systems with Linux, uh, Mac. I'm not sure about Windows, but CyberChef does it for you. Uh, and you can even download a, a isolation of CyberChef to your local machine. All right. Now, if, you're, if you have uh, problems with regex and things like that, I didn't show you this, but there's this tool here called regex 101. This is kind of a side note. I love this tool. It's amazing. It helps out a lot with regex. If I have an issue, I'll throw a bunch of code in, in the bottom here, and they'll just start typing in here. 
And as you can see, if I don't do it right, it'll give me help on the side. It'll even tell me if I'm going PCRE or PCRE2. It's a pretty solid tool. And I really like it. And it's used a lot in tandem with the auto works. All right? So, to be honest, that's my top. And I think I'm a little early. So, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And go here to help me get better. Thank you all, you're great.